All right, welcome back. We're still talking about creativity, and now we're going to talk about computational artifacts. So first, we'll mention what computing enables people to do. And this is a beautiful rendering of a poster uh, for a, a, a graphical series. So computing enables people, I'll read this from it, to use creative development processes, which we just talked about the processes before, for to create artifacts. And I almost want to have a, now a shorthand, because I'm going to say the phrase computational artifacts about 25 times in the next video. So I'm going to say CA. It's my new shorthand. No one else uses this, but it's for me, to CA. To create CA, computational artifacts, for creative expression or to solve a problem. And it's really important that I mention this. those two are both valid. It means, as you're making a CA, a computational artifact, I'll show what that is in the next thing, as you're making something with a computer, that's what it is, that CA can either be for creative expression. People always think, oh, it's always for creative expression. You know, whenever you make a computational artifact, it's because you care about it. Like people make, you know, write a novel. They write a novel using a word processor. That is using a computer to make your own, you know, your own creative expression of your own story. But it could also be solving a problem. Someone says, boy, we got to design a bridge. That bridge is a problem. I need a bridge to span these two, these two coasts. What do we do? You can be using creativity in that total solve a problem model, right? The problem was given to you as needed to do. And you're using creativity in your engineering, in your software development, in all the processes you do, OK? So there's lots of ways that creativity can come into. And when you're making a CA, that CA could either be used to solve a problem or for purely creative expression, and that's wonderful too, and celebrated too, and valid. It's really important. It's valid also. Okay? So when you're choosing projects, when you, the community online and the community here locally, when you're choosing your projects for the create task, you can either choose it kind of on the, is it a solve a problem type, and that's valid, 100% valid, or do you just want to make something that you always wanted to make just for yourself, and that's also valid too. Okay? That's the first one. Um, so a computational artifact, a CA, is something that a human uses a computer to build. That's it. And one of the great examples we talk about is maybe software. You can use, you know, we're in a class is obviously programming is emphasized, so maybe software is an artifact. It turns out, here's this cool thing, watch. Let's say you make a drawing program, kind of an auto drawer that'll like make a random thing and draw around in random things, okay? Here's what's cool about this. The program you wrote, that's a CA, that's a computational artifact. Watch this. The picture that your program drew is also a computational artifact. Even though you didn't do it, you kind of had your hand in what made it, but the picture itself is also a CA. Isn't that kind of neat? So it's not just the program, but the output of the program. Isn't that kind of neat that here's the program and its output, and both of those were CAs. Both of those are computational artifacts, okay? And obviously, if it's something that's used as a computer, then you have to use software tools and services to do that. That's, what, that's a piece of that. So these computational tools and techniques, so the tools and techniques for this, okay, are used to make the artifacts. We've seen that before. Okay? And they include, but not limited to, now let's think of the things that you use a computer to do to make CAs. Well, how about a programming interface? So here's a picture of Snap, right? There, a beautiful picture of Snap. And Snap's a beautiful, hopefully graphical, and hopefully fun and friendly interface for using a computer to make a CA, in this case, making programs. Okay, that's easy. You can also, so it also says, uh, a creatively developed CA has non-traditional techniques. We said that already before. That's, that's a repeat here, OK? It reflects personal interests, so you're bringing your interests into the process, all that said before, OK? And here's the interesting thing. These techniques can enhance the process of finding a solution. So remember, you want to sometimes solve a problem. Computation can help you get to that solution. So, oh, I need to figure out exactly what the load is I can put on this bridge. Well, you can use non-computer techniques or computing techniques to find out what the maximum load that could, a bridge could handle. And obviously, you should probably know this. Again, this is, a lot of this is very common sense. Computing can help with the process of finding the solution. So computing can help with your creativity, if you choose a creative problem, or it can help with the actual solve a problem part, because computing can be used to verify and test and run a thousand numbers through it and do simulations and all those wonderful things, OK? Last slide before we, before we cut. A creatively developed process OK, a creative development process for creating CAs can be used, as I said, to solve problems when, here's when, when traditional techniques don't work. So a traditional technique might mean we tried something the same way, and it just, it, we're not getting any closer to the solution. Well, let's have a creative 
or kind of response to that to think about how to get out of the box. Out of the box thinking is kind of what that's saying to get to that solution. Okay? Um, and here's an interesting idea. You can create artifacts new. People often think, well, you have to start new. I'm starting from ground, and here's my novel. No. You can create these artifacts by remixing. The idea of remixing is now very popular, but it wasn't 10 years ago. People thought you have to start from the beginning. You didn't think you could kind of take code from here, take code from here, and put code together and make that as like this remix of code from here, code from here, that does some powerful stuff. Or take a picture from here, picture from here, picture from here, and using digital techniques, people have done collages and cut things out of newspapers for years. But, they've, but only recently has kind of, I mean, maybe 20 years, has Photo editing software make it easy enough that I can just grab pictures around in the web is now online. I can grab pictures and cut them together and paste them together to make a whole new thing that reflects my creative style. And here's a beautiful picture of a remix, okay? Of digitally manipulated photos of the artist and the, 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 the Mona Lisa together as like overlaid. Like, oh, isn't that cool? That kind of his face is kind of seen in her face if you compare them. Beautiful. And it sends a message of like, wow, see? See, when you're, when you're a painter, you're actually reflecting your own sensibilities and maybe your own personality or maybe your own face into your, into your art. It's just beautiful to kind of connect with that. Um, so another piece of it is computation helps you with enhanced precision and detail. My, my great example, I had some folks work on, on our BJCX team help me with some of these examples, which is think about the photo editing process. And in the early days before computation, you were in a dark room and you were trying to dodge and burn and try to lighten or darken an area of your print you're trying to make. And your dark room, it's all lights and you're doing this. In Photoshop and in other photo editing software, you get incredible more detail. I can zoom, 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 zoom all the way in and do things at a level of detail and precision I never could have in a dark room process. Okay, so that's a really great example of how computational is helping you in the process of making your creative artifact. Okay, with more detail and precision. And finally, as I talked about before, the key thing all this is creativity at the core of it. At the core of the whole thing is about your personal interest. It's your personal interest that has to be reflected in the artifact you're making. Okay? We'll learn more about artifacts and their power and limitations and even how you make them in the next video.